subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Estuarine Crocodile. <laughs> oh, hi everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. I just saw a big bird drop something. Do you want to help me look for it? You found it, Hero? Oh, it's an egg, but it's already empty. I wonder what was in it. What's the matter, Hero? Don't be sad about an empty egg. Ah, Hero! It's some kind of lizard. Are you okay, Hero? I wonder what kind of lizard this is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Say cheese. Hi, Katie. Did you find out what kind of lizard it is? Hi, Leo. As it turns out, it's not a lizard. It's a crocodile. And this one is an estuarine crocodile, also known as the saltwater crocodile. A crocodile in our garden? Wow! As a baby, it's very small, but it can grow up to five meters in length. That's huge! An estuarine crocodile must eat a lot to get to that size. The estuarine crocodile is a carnivore, which means it feeds on other animals. On almost every animal, it can even attack humans. Hmm. Where do estuarine crocodiles come from? Estuarine crocodiles can be found in the tropical parts of Southeast Asia, South Asia, Australia, and the Pacific. They usually live in mangrove swamps or estuaries. A mangrove swamp is a place in the tropics where trees grow thickly along a saltwater river or sea. An estuary is an area where a river meets the sea. We should go there and return the baby crocodile to its nest. Come and join us. Good thinking, Leo. See you downstairs. What is it, Hero? A sign? Oh, it's warning us that there are crocodiles nearby. I don't see any crocodiles, but we'd better be careful, Katie. Let's keep walking. It says here that crocodiles are very good at hiding in water. We should also avoid thick vegetation where crocodiles could hide. So, if crocodiles are very good at hiding, does that mean there might be crocodiles here, but we just can't see them? Um, there might be, Leo. Wait, where's Hero? <laughs> Hero! Leo, humans can run faster than crocodiles on land. Let's hope so, Katie. Run! Oh no, another crocodile! Let's jump on these logs in the river. These aren't logs, Katie. They're crocodiles. Yikes! There's only one way out. Everybody, it's time to fly. We did it. We found the baby crocodile's nest. Great job, everyone. Hooray! Yay! a baby estuarine crocodile in our garden. We learned that estuarine crocodiles live in a mangrove swamp or estuary. So we returned the baby crocodile to its nest in the mangrove swamp. Good job, children. You did it. 
You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Goliath Bird Eater Spider. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm going to explore the garden. I'll be using my magnifying glass to look out for interesting animals. Let's go. Hey, look at this. It's a spider's web. It's the spider. Spiders spin webs to trap insects for food. Let's look for other interesting animals, Hero. Look, it's a hole in the ground. Maybe a rabbit lives here. Listen, I hear the rabbit coming out. Here it comes. Yikes! That's not a rabbit. That's a huge spider. Better keep a distance, Hero. I've never seen such a big spider before. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Now hold still, spider. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything about the spider? You're just in time, Leo. This is a Goliath bird eater spider. It's one of the biggest spiders in the world. Although it's called the Goliath bird eater, it almost never eats birds. Sometimes it eats baby birds and eggs, but mostly it eats small animals and insects found on the ground. The Goliath bird eater has venomous fangs, but it doesn't have teeth to chew with. So, after catching an animal, the spider releases juices onto the animal's body to make it soft. The animal's body will become soft enough for the spider to slurp up. The Goliath bird eater is such a good hunter that it doesn't need a web. It can sneak up and pounce on its prey. It will then bite and kill its prey with its venomous fangs. It's not deadly to humans, but it can be very painful. How come I've never seen such a large spider here before? That's because the Goliath bird eater is usually found in the northern part of South America, where it lives in the rainforests. Our garden is certainly not the place for such a giant spider. Let's bring it back to the rainforest where it belongs. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. The ground is getting muddier. The jeep might get stuck in the mud. So let's continue on foot. Okay, Leo. What was that? <laughs> oh, it's a weasel. Weasels prey on Goliath bird eaters. It's moving so fast. I think it's trying to get the spider. Oh no. We should help the spider. Come on, Hero. Let's chase the weasels away. Wait, Leo. Remember what Ranger Rocky said? When the spider is defending itself from predators, it can release tiny, sharp hairs that are very painful. We should keep a distance. You're right, Katie. But what else can we do to scare the weasels away? I... I don't know. I can't find anything. I don't think we can scare the weasels away with water, Hero. Whoa! What are you doing, Hero? That's a great idea, Hero. It might work if we shoot the water out our bottles. Let's do it. Shoo, weasels! Leave the spider alone! We did it! The weasels are gone! Here you go, spider. Back into the tank. Look, it's digging a burrow to live in. We did it. We found a home for the Goliath bird eater spider. Hooray! We found 
a Goliath bird eater spider in our garden. We learned that Goliath bird eaters dig burrows in the ground and that they live in the rainforests of South America. So we brought the spider back to the rainforest where it made a new burrow to live in. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The scalloped hammerhead shark. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. <coughs> oh, this? I found this seashell at the beach. I've got a whole box full of seashells. If you put the seashell close to your ear, you can hear the sea. Here, listen. <coughs> it sounds just like the sea, doesn't it? <coughs> What's the matter, Hero? Hmm? I think there's something underneath the seashells. It's a fish. Look at the shape of its head. It's so weird. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find any information about the fish? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The fish you found is actually a young scalloped hammerhead shark. The shark gets its name from the unusual shape of its head, which looks like a hammer. The shark's head helps it to find prey. There are special sense organs spread out over the wide head of the scalloped hammerhead shark. These organs help the shark to pick up electrical signals that are given off by animals underwater. Wow! Just like a radar! So, what animals does the scalloped hammerhead shark eat? Scalloped hammerhead sharks mostly eat fish like sardines and herring, and sometimes animals like squid and octopus. Bigger hammerhead sharks even eat smaller sharks. But since the shark you found is still young, it prefers to eat small fish and shrimp. By the way, scalloped hammerhead sharks live in the warm tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Hmm. The pond in our garden isn't big enough for the shark to swim in. We should bring the shark back to its home in the ocean. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. What is it, Hero? Hey, where did the shark go? Let me have a look. I see the hammerhead shark. It's chasing shrimp underwater. Oh no, the shark is caught in the net. The net must have come from that boat over there. I think it's a shrimp trawler. What's a shrimp trawler? A shrimp trawler is a fishing boat designed to catch shrimp. Unfortunately, other marine animals are sometimes caught in the nets by accident. These marine animals are called bycatch. We've got to save our friend from becoming bycatch. Katie and Hero, you stay here and watch the jeep, okay? What do you think, Hero? Should Leo have all the fun alone? Phew, that was close. Thanks, Katie and Hero. I could not have done it without you two. No problem, Leo. It was actually Hero's idea. (coughs) 
We did it! We found the young hammerhead sharks home. Great work, everyone! Yay! Hooray! We found a young scalloped hammerhead shark in our garden. We learned that scalloped hammerhead sharks come from the tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. So we went to the ocean and brought the young shark back to its home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Atlantic Puffin. everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. Look, Hero, this is a remote controlled car. I can make the car move using this controller. I can make the car go round in circles. I can make the car drive in a figure eight. I can make the car drive really far away and I can make it drive back again. It's a bird. Where did you come from? I've never seen a bird like this before. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Yes, I did, Leo. The bird you found is an Atlantic puffin. Atlantic puffins can be recognized by their colorful beaks. Like most birds, Atlantic puffins can fly, but they can also swim underwater using their wings and webbed feet. The Atlantic puffin is a fast swimmer and can stay underwater for up to a minute. The Atlantic puffin mostly eats small fish such as herring and sand eels. Atlantic puffins can catch several small fish in one dive. They use their tongue to hold fish in their mouth, so they leave their beaks free to catch even more fish. That's amazing! I've never seen such a bird before. Where does it come from? Atlantic puffins come from far up north. They live on sea coasts and islands around the Atlantic Ocean. More than half of the world's Atlantic puffins are found around Iceland. About eight to 10 million puffins live there. That's a lot of puffins. So our puffin is a really long way from Iceland and it's too hot for it to stay here. We should bring it back home. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Here we are. I don't see any puffin nests around here. Maybe we can find some below the cliff. Let me take a closer look. Whoa! Leo! Leo! Um, I could use some help, Katie. I can't reach you, Leo. Let me get a rope. Hang on. Oh no! There's no rope in the jeep! Leo, I can't find a... rope? I have rope in my backpack, remember? Can you throw one end of the rope? I... I don't think so, Katie. One wrong move and I'll fall. Oh no! What can we do now? <laughs> oh! Hi, Puffin! Thank you, Puffin. Now we can pull Leo up. Why don't you use the Jeep? That's much huh? easier. 
Great! Katie already had the same idea! Ranger Rocky! You should be more careful, Junior Ranger. Cliff edges can be unstable or very slippery, so stay away from them. Yeah, that wasn't very smart of me. Well, at least you're safe now, Leo. Yeah. Look, it's the Puffin's partner. We did it. We found the Puffin's nest. Great work, everyone. Hooray! We found an Atlantic Puffin in our garden. We learned that Atlantic Puffins return to the same nest every year to breed. So we went to Iceland to help the Puffin find its nest. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hola, exploradores juniors. Check out our Spanish channel by clicking the link in the description below. See you there.